another episode of Mountain Slaughter's Garage. Today we're here with our Skidoo. We're going to do a little cl clutch maintenance on it. Now, when the G4 chassis came out in 2017, it was touted as this all-new chassis, brand new 815 motor no one had seen before, and this new clutch that they call the P-Drive clutch. It replaced the TRA clutch that Skidoo had used for many, many years, probably at least 20 years, coming on their mountain sleds. And this has been a pretty good, durable clutch. It's when Skidoo first announced this clutch, they kind of said it was a no-maintenance clutch, and they do wear pretty well, but we have found there's a few things that wear on them. The flyweight rollers, which are right in here, like any flyweight clutch, tend to wear. There's some maintenance you can do on those. So we're going to show you how to pull the flyweight rollers out, um, how to grease them, how to look at them to see what kind of condition. They're, there's a roller bearing inside that the cage can come apart on. We're going to look at that. So we're going to show you how to take that out, take it apart, and maintenance that part of this. There's also some other rollers here they call the, the drive rollers, these little plastic black rollers here on the side of the clutch. We're not going to get into those today because those don't seem to need as much maintenance or wear as much unless you got four or 5,000 miles on your snowmobile. But we're going to just go over the flyweight roller maintenance today. When you want to take this apart, there's a couple ways you can maintenance these rollers. You can actually do this on the machine, but it's a lot easier for me to show you this with taking the clutch off and taking the clutch apart. So if you have the tools to take this apart, it makes it cleaner. Take it apart you can inspect everything clean everything you can look your clutch over really well so it's really nice to have the tools but you don't have to to do this job with first part of this video i'm going to pull the clutch off i'm going to show you how to take it apart and how to maintenance the rollers with it off and then we'll do a little quick segment at the end of how to do this with the clutch on your machine All right, now we're here we got our clutch our side panel off we got our clutch cover pulled off of our sled now this little tool here comes in your clutch cover right here and this is what compresses your secondary clutch so you can take the belt off so I already pulled my belt off and I kind of hope everyone knows that. I try to make these videos pretty much as basic as possible so anyone can kind of do this in their own garage no matter how much experience they have. But I hope everyone has enough experience to take their belt off. They don't have to show you how to do that. The next part is we need to take our primary clutch off. To do that we need to get this access panel off. This access panel comes off. On the back side of it here it's got this little pin. It goes through the little, this little access panel right here. On the inside, you got to reach down there with some needle nose pliers, pull that out. Then this access panel comes off. And then the next thing we got to do is just pull our clutch off. To do that, we need to pull the clutch bolt out. So the clutch bolt is a 12 point. You're going to need a 12 point for it because it's not just your regular um, six pointed bolt. It's got 12 little hex heads on it. We can show you in there what that looks like just so you know what you're going to need when you do this. We're just going to pull this bolt off. You have to unscrew the bolt at first, and then you have to pull it out here, and then unscrew it again. It unscrews twice, and then you get that off. And you're going to need a clutch puller. You can buy these anywhere. You can buy them online on Amazon. You can buy them on uh, Western Power Sports or from your ski shop. You just pop this in here. I've kind of always used an impact wrench to do this. The owner, all these service manu manuals tell you not to, but it just makes it life so much easier to do this with an impact wrench. All right, now that I had already pulled this clutch off once before, so it, it popped off pretty easy. Now, to get the clutch out of here, torques a bit right here. It makes it a lot easier to pull us out if you pull that out. Okay, that just allows us to pull this out a little bit and get the clutch out of here. Okay, got a clutch out. Now, we're going to be looking at the rollers. These are the rollers right here, the flyweight rollers. There's also these drive rollers over here. These don't seem to wear as bad as these do, but these also can get loose. You might need to replace those at some point too. So let's go over to the bench and we'll show you how to take this apart. Okay, we got our clutch out on the table now. And when the first thing we need to take off to pull this apart, we need to take off this dampener on the front side. It's held on by six Torx bits. And these are Torx number 40. We're going to pull all six of these out. There's a taper fitting between this, the dampener, and the shaft that goes through from the stationary sheath. So we need to separate those. So in order to do that, we can put our clutch puller back in there. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. One way that I saw in the service manual do it is put your puller in, tap that with the half, and you can see all that, that come apart there. Sometimes, since this is a tapered fitting, kind of like your clutch onto the shaft, the only way, I haven't been able to get it apart that way. Now, if you can't get your clutch to separate the movable sheath from the stationary sleeve by backing this with a hammer, I only know of really one other way to do it. And uh, I was told this by 
When the 17s first came out, the Skidoos, I had to collect one day and I couldn't figure out how to get it apart. I was working with some guys on the Skidoo race team at the time and a couple guys that were ambassadors of Skidoo and I called them. I said, hey, how do you get this thing apart? And they're like, the only way we know of is to screw this in, make sure it's screwed in a number of threads so all the threads are gripping. You'll hold it upside down like this and you drop it on a cement floor. It seems very sketch and very redneck, but this thing can get stuck, that tapered fit can get stuck so hard I don't know of any other way to do it, and this actually works really well. That's the part. Um, now all you do is you pull your clutch puller back out, and you have it apart. So two ways of doing it, the hammer way, if you can't do it that way, drop it on the cement, make sure it's completely flat. I dropped on this, I have a piece of carpet here, so it's, if it happens to land a little bit sideways, it does have a little bit of cushion, because you definitely don't want to break this because they're pretty expensive. This end here is tapered, and it tapered fits into this, and so those get pretty stuck together, and so getting those apart can be pretty difficult sometimes, so we're just going to put this back on here. Now we're back to where we have a lot easier access to our rollers, but still they're compressed in with the spring, so the next thing we need to do is take the spring out. Unfortunately, if you've worked on Articats or Polaris before, it's super easy because you pull the clutch cover off, the springs right there you pull off, and then you can go work on this. But the problem is, the design of this, you've got to compress the spring with a special tool in order to get the spring out. So um, if you're doing this, it's nice to have those tools, but they can, if you, do all the, if you buy all the tools to put, take this thing apart, it can be kind of expensive, but let's just show you how to do that. Now, in order to get the spring out, you're going to need a special tool that looks like this. has the shaft in it that goes down here. We're going to show you how to put that on in here. But what we're trying to get out, there's a little C-clip that goes in the top here in, the, in this spring cup. So if you can see it, there's a little C-clip right here in the groove. There's a little groove right there. We need to compress this cup right here, this metal shiny cup. Press that down, then you can get to that clip and pop the clip out, and the whole spring comes out. All right, so we need this tool. This is going to screw down in here. And this part of the tool, there's this, this tool has a, a big open side and a skinny open side. You want the big open side here where the clip comes together so you can get better access to it. So you're going to put this down on there, and this is going to fit right down on that shiny part, the spring cup. And then we can put our little compressor handle on it. Now when you compress this, you only have to compress it enough to get this cup part down below the C-clip right here, so we just have to, you see how now we're just barely below, now we can kind of pop the C-clip out, you see I've kind of got that started up there, now you can kind of just work it around the back side over there, your screwdriver underneath it, and just kind of pop it all the way around until it pops out just like that. Then we just take our clamp off. You know, the, the spring cup comes out, this little rubber thing that holds kind of the spring in place, and there's your spring. And then you can see we have, that just lifts off, then we have access to our rollers right here. And they're pretty stiff and gummed up, so they don't roll very smoothly. So I was going to tell you, before you pull this apart, make sure you mark it. So I've had black marker here and black marker there, so you know where this goes back together when you put it back together. All right, now that we have our clutch taken apart, we want to be able to get the roller out. To do that, we've got to take out this screw right here that has a 25 Torx on it. A 20 fits actually pretty nicely, but don't try and use a 20 because you'll probably strip it out. A 25 fits pretty tightly, and if you put too much torque on these with a 20, you probably strip it, and if you strip it, you may not be able to get it out whatsoever. Once you get the screw all the way out, you need to take the pin, which goes all the way through there, you need to get the pin out. And the pin has a little bit of a tight press fit. They actually make a special tool. You can see this end of the pin has got threads in it, and you can thread where the screw that you pulled out threads into there. It has a little tool that you can thread into there and punch it out. But uh, I bought a tool. I lost it. I don't know where it is. If you can buy and find a bolt that's got the same, now this is metric threads, five millimeter 80 thread pitch, and you can just screw that in there a little ways. Then if you just get a little light hammer, you can just 
tap that out like that, and then you can just unscrew this. You want to hold this somewhere where it's not all going to fall apart on you when you pull the shaft out. So just gently pull the shaft out, lift this up. You're going to have these two spacers. These aren't seals, these are just spacers. There's actually a seal in each side of this. There's a little seal right here that the shaft seals against for getting, you don't want to get water and crud in there. There's one seal on each side. You can actually pull these apart. Um, this one over here, I've pulled apart. You see the seal on that side. I've pulled the seal out of this side. That seal just press fits down into there and you can pull it out. And this is supposed to have a roller bearing inside. Now you can see this, this is a brand new one and I've pulled apart. You can see it has a nice little roller bearing and a roller cage in there. But what happens over time is this cage breaks apart and then you start grinding up the roller cage. And that's what happens to this um, over time. Now my snow wheel has about a thousand mountain miles on it. And uh, when I pulled these apart, if you look over here, this is uh, how my rollers came out. I mean, you can see all these broken pieces that came out of the inside of this roller. Here's another one over here, came out. It was all broken apart like this, and this was only with a thousand miles. So it's something worth looking at. I was just gonna pull this apart and re-grease them. I didn't know they were all gonna be all broken apart like this. But you know, you get all these little parts grinding in there against the rollers and against the pressure from the flyweight pushing on this. Um, it's gonna cause some problems over time. So it's probably a good thing to check even if you don't have a lot of miles on your sled, like I said, this little sled only had about a thousand miles on it. So what you need to do, you need to buy a kit to replace this. I bought this new kit from Western Power Sports. You can buy these parts anywhere. You can buy a full rebuild kit that uh, comes with this roller, comes with these rollers here, and comes with the pins and everything. This is the kit I bought from SPI off Western Power Sports. It comes with the rollers. It comes with brand new pins, comes with brand new pin screws, and then it comes with brand new, the little rubber shims that go on each side of the roller to hold the roller separated. I think this kit was about $125. You can buy the whole kit, like I said. So anyway, you're just gonna have to decide what parts you need before you wanna uh, tackle this project and put it all back together. What you really wanna do is inspect these rollers here, make sure they're in good shape, make sure they're not cracked or broken. Now they're not supposed to be tight on the shaft, but make sure they don't have a ton of play in them. These are still pretty much about like they were from the factory, all my rollers on my sled, so I'm not gonna bother with these right now. Okay, now we got all of our parts to redo our rollers. When we have these roll, get these rollers, the roller bearing in here comes dry. It doesn't come pre-greased, so you're gonna have to grease these. And there's a, special, there's a couple of different ways you can do this to grease these rollers. They say you, they want you to use this Isoflex grease. You can buy this from Scuduri. It's kind of ridiculous. This little tube of grease costs $60. Uh, I've seen people use other greases, but this is the grease that Skidoo recommends. So I figured 60 bucks, I spent a lot more on parts than that on a sled, so I might as well do the one they recommend. But I can't imagine that some other um, good grease would matter, but I'm using the Isoflex that they recommend. So to get the rollers greased, you can do a couple of things. Some people just take the tip of a clean flathead screwdriver, put the grease down here and work it around and work it in all the little nooks and crannies in the roller. That's one way I've heard of people doing it and you can sit there and work it for a little while, try and work it in. Uh, the other way I've heard people doing this is taking a Q-tip. Some people recommend cutting the tip off so you're not getting all the little fibers out of the cotton part of it in there and then putting some grease on it using the q-tip to work it around in there and that seems I like the q-tip part because it's not anything that's going to sharp or metal that's going to damage my roller at all or the little the little seals on the outside could get damaged if you're using something metal so this way is not a bad way to do it the recommended way in the skidoo manual is to get this skidoo part here this actually fits your roller slides down here now this is an aftermarket one, this isn't a skidoo part, this is an SPI part, and I gotta say, I'm not real happy with this part. It didn't fit really well. For one thing, your little tube of Isoflex is supposed to screw on the end here. And uh, this one, I actually had to fix the thread so it would screw on. And then I also had a hard time getting it to fit in the roller, but what you do, you screw it on like that, and you squeeze this, and you can kinda hear the air bubbles and stuff squishing out of it, and it will really pack the grease in there really well. That's probably the best way to do it. And then when you're done, you can pull your roller off. So if you can see that down in there, 
grease is pretty well, uh, pretty well kind of got down in all the little, all the little nooks and crannies in there. It should be greased pretty well. Now, the last thing we're going to do is install our rollers. Now, we're going to get one of our new roller pins, start it in the hole there, put one of the other washers in. Now, if we get it going through a little bit too far, we need to back it out a little bit so we can get this one down in here. Push that through there. Now, this is a press fit into this end here. So you just need a little tap this side, get it in a little bit, and then we're going to go back through. I'm going to reinstall the Torx bits that I took out because the SPI kit came with this little teeny head, this little teeny Allen head on it. I don't like that. I'm afraid that I'm going to strip that out if I ever try and get it out again. And I like this 25-bit Torx bit, so I'm going to reuse these. I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on them, and then we're going to screw all these into this hole here and uh, finish this up and then put it back together. Now we got all of our new rollers put in our clutch. Now, I didn't show you this, but these little bolts here, this is called the, they call this the axle shaft that goes through here. This is the axle shaft screw. These axle shaft screws torque down to 44 inch pounds. So remember, don't forget to torque those down. Also put a little Loctite on them. Now, we're going to put this back on here. Now, this is sometimes a little bit difficult to get back on. You want to spread these two black rollers apart. Also remember, when this goes on, I, I marked my clutch as a black Sharpie mark here, black Sharpie mark there, black Sharpie mark there. So I know how this came apart. Now, as you as you try and put this down here, you're going to have to lift up all of your weights to get it to fit down on here. A little bit at a time. It's a little bit easier if you got another person helping you. All right. Now I got all of my three black marks lined up. Well, then I also put a little mark. I don't know if you can see that very well on the top of my dampener. So that's also going to go on just like this once we get our spring on. But the next thing you do is put our spring in. Really good time to change your spring if you want a new spring in your clutch, a different spring, or you just want to replace your old spring because it's worn out. And we're going to put all this back together the way we took it apart. Now don't forget before you put your tool on to put your little C-clip in there before you put this on. Otherwise, you're going to have to pull it all apart. So we're going to put this all back in here. Now we got this turned down as far as we need to. You can see here we have our little lip where this clip goes down onto there. Now if we just work this in kind of the same way we took it off, one edge at a time. See we got it started there. I can hold it on the back side with my thumb here. Working it all the way around until it clips into place. Now it's nice that we can see it all the way there. Turn around we can see that it's in place there. Now we're just going to take this off. Now we're going to put our dampener on. I got my black line there, my three black lines there. There's this little spacer that goes in here. I'm going to line that up right where that's going to go. But even though I still have a little bit of yellow Loctite on them, I'm going to put a little dab of blue on it. Lift that up like that. And then to start each one of these. Now don't tighten them down too tight because there's a torque for all of these as well. Now when it comes time, once I have all these screws in, we'll come back with our torque wrench. We'll come back with our torque wrench. These tighten down to 23 foot-pounds. Uh, and that's the last thing we do to put our clutch together. Kind of a simple way to do this. Now we're going to go back, put this on the machine, and uh, this will be good to go for another year. Install our clutch back in our machine. Now, one thing you have to realize if you've never had your clutch off before on your Skidoo, is they have a kind of a unique situation here. You can't just stick this back on in any position. It's got this little flat spot here on the crankshaft, and there's a flat spot deep inside the clutch here that those two have to match. So this clutch can only go on one way. You can't have it turned this way or this way or 180 off. It only goes on one direction. So when you put this on, So when you get this down here, you got to kind of turn this until it fits onto that flat spot. Fits on all the way just like that. You can feel it kind of slide into place. So that's how your skidoo goes in. And then you got to put your bolt in. Your clutch bolt goes in. Remember, you have to screw it in two times to get it in all the way. And when you tighten this clutch bolt down, it torques down to 89 foot-pounds. 
All right, now I told you earlier that we we're going to show you how to replace these rollers with the clutch in the machine. But we're just going to show you how that's done. So we got to do it the kind of the same way. You got to take out the roller axle screw. This is the one with the 25 Torx screw in the end of it. So we're going to take that out. We're going to put that over here for safekeeping. Then that little bolt that we had that was the same size, we're going to put in here and we're going to tap out our roller axle shaft. Now we don't want to drop any of these parts down here, especially the roller itself. So we're going to put a magnet on there, pull the, sh the axle shaft out. Now, the roller can just lift out just like that. We got to make sure we don't lose these. And that's as easy as it is to get the roller out. Now when you look at that, you think, well, that was pretty easy to get out. And well, so why would we take this all the way apart when we can just do it that easily? I mean, it's a good question. It's nice to at least once a year or so, pull your complete clutch off, pull it all apart and inspect all the pieces. And so if you need to replace anything or something broken inside, if you need to replace your clutch spring, uh, you can do that. And then if you're gonna put this back in, kind of the same way, start the shaft, start one of the, and then you can start that. Then if you have some kind of a little thing, you need to pick up the roller and put in that little red one, center everything, and just kind of tap the shaft back in until it stops. Then we're going to put our little screw in the end here, and that's as easy as it is to get the roller out with it on the machine. So pick which way you want to do it. Either way is pretty simple, and uh, just the other way you're going to need a bunch of tools, and that gets to let you inspect everything get in deeper, especially if you're going to be changing clutch weights and doing some clutch weight work at the same time or spring work. It's a lot easier just to pull everything apart and do it that way. All right, now that we're done getting our clutch all installed on this uh, Skidoo 850, we're just going to sum up a few things in this video. Now, like I told you in the video, you don't have to pull the clutch off and pull everything apart in order to replace your rollers like I showed you at the end. It's actually fairly simple to do it on your machine. I kind of went through the whole process of just what tools are involved, how to use them, and it's a lot easier to kind of show you, go through the whole process if the clutch is off the machine. So you can do it either way. Probably recommended that you at least pull your clutch off maybe once a year and pull the part and clean it and inspect all the parts, and especially your roller since uh, these, this machine didn't have a lot of time on it, but the rollers were broken apart. If you go to buy rollers off the Skidoo website, they're really not any more expensive than the SPI rollers that I bought. I haven't used the SPI rollers before, so I thought I'd try them, and we'll inspect them throughout the season and see how long they last. But Skidoo's kind of gone through see, three different sets of rollers on the 850, if you look at their microfish. Originally in the 17s and 18s, it came with a, a part number here, and it was replaced, I think, in 2019 with this part number here that ends in 4285. And that's a part number you can buy right now if you buy the Skidoo rollers. Um, from straight from Skidoo. What I did notice for looking through this, if you look at the 2023 Microfish, Skidoo changed the roller again for 2023, and I tried to buy one of these rollers just to take it apart and see if it's different than the current roller that we have, but it was back ordered until November, so I couldn't get one yet. So if you look at this roller, it's actually a different part number, ends in 4946. Uh, I don't know how this roller is different. Um, the clutch is essentially the same. They made a couple small changes on the 2023 clutch, but really, the roller should be the same as far as dimensions and go. The 2023 roller should work in all the previous machines, but I don't know what the difference is. I'm going to try and find out, and if I do, I'll post it on the Facebook page if I can find out what the difference is the roller is. So if you want to get some of the parts um, for this and get the grease in that, probably the best place to go that has the most comprehensive list of Skidoo tools and parts for your clutch um, that I've found is this place called CNT Power Sports. They would have every, pretty much everything you need to replace the clutch on your Skidoo 850. It's really a nice comprehensive website as far as having all that stuff in one place. And the one thing that's really nice that they have, if you don't want to spend $60 for that little tube of grease that uh, I showed you, like this where you buy the, the tool and a little syringe of grease all in one setup to grease your roller. And I, I can't remember, I think this was like $40 for this whole setup. So pretty inexpensive from buying the grease altogether. So that's a really nice thing that they offer on their website if you want to do this, but you don't want to spend 
you know, $30 for the tool, then another $60 for the grease. And I have to tell you, I was pretty disappointed in the S little grease tool, this little metal part that I bought. It, uh, this end of it here has to fit through the shaft, the axle shaft that they call it, that fits through your rollers 10 millimeters. My shaft here wouldn't fit through the roller because it was five thousandths of an inch too big and so I had to turn it down five thousandths of an inch to get it to fit. So fairly disappointed in the SPI part. So I would say stay away from that one. I don't know if my part was just a bad one or I would imagine if they've all been that bad that they would hopefully would fix it. But anyway, I would go to this website here, the CNT Power Sports. Their prices are pretty reasonable. All their parts they sell are factory Ski-Doo parts. If you want to buy rollers or any other parts for this, it's all factory Ski-Doo parts. So a pretty nice place to buy it all in one place. I hope this video is helpful for you. Get your Ski-Doo uh, maintenance done and keeping your Ski-Doo running good throughout the winter. I'll keep looking at these SPI rollers I have on this after every ride or so and just kind of see how they, they hold up over the winter to see if they're maybe hold up as good or better than the Skidoo ones that they replaced. Skidoo ones like we showed you, all the roller cages were all broken up in there. Now all those little parts, the roller cage I think was plastic. And as that gets chewed up in there and all those pieces break up, what's going to happen is your roller rolls, it's going to break up those big pieces into smaller and smaller pieces until, the, until there's really no cage left. And what happens when there's no cage left, all the bearings can move around as far as they want, then you're going to have metal on metal and you're going to have some real problems. So keep an eye on your rollers. If you've got a thousand miles on a machine, I'd definitely take one out and see what the rollers look like. I'm going to show you one video clip I saw from Jay Matterberry. Kind of a fun little clip. Uh, I'll show up here. Them coming up this little ravine up here gets almost stuck. You know, and then they move on. And the next clip, it shows them coming up this ravine. This is kind of the one I want to show because I thought this was pretty cool. Um, I hope Jay and uh, Blaine Matthews don't mind me taking one of their video clips. But they've got this guy sitting on the top. Kind of a fun little thing we do to get videos coming up. Now, this is really the kind of cool one this guy coming up. And this happens quite a bit when you're video and you kind of sometimes don't have 100% control over a machine coming up. So the skis are in the air. You're trying to balance this thing. And uh, here he comes up. You can see the video guy right here. Kind of a fun little thing. So I kind of wanted to throw that in there. Anyway, like and share the videos. Uh, subscribe to the page. Share them on your Facebook pages that you like so you can help other people out with uh, doing maintenance on their machine. And uh, have a great winter. And we'll see you next time on Mountain Slitter Garage.